Chucky B. Your first Q ability is going to be Rending Strike. It's a single target ability that applies pretty good damage and then also adds an additional bleed for 5 seconds afterwards. Also, it reduces the healing that they receive by 5%. Um, this stacks up to 3 times, so you can get a 15% healing reduction on them at all times, uh, which is pretty cool. But your go-to ability on your Q is going to be Rending Swing. Now this does a really nice swing in a 6 meter radius. Now what this does is it applies a bleed to all enemies for 5 seconds just like the other one and it also applies all the other effects as well as the um, healing reduction and all that. But it does it to multiple enemies um, which is just way way more beneficial way more stronger PvP and PvE. The only time that the single target ability would be better is if you're on a legendary boss and you know it's just going to be one target and you don't have to worry about it. But uh, Rending Swing is always going to be your best bet. Moving on to the W abilities, your first ability you grab is Deadly Chop. Now Deadly Chop is going to wind up time and then you hit the enemy for a massive amount of damage, also reducing their resistance by 50% for 8 seconds. This is a pretty cool pairing ability if you like have some Qs on the target, hit them with the Deadly Chop and then apply your uh, E ability to do max damage. Uh, Deadly Chop is pretty cool. Adrenaline Boost is the next one that you can get. Um, it increases your movement speed by 50% and your damage by 25% for 5 seconds. Uh, this is really cool. Honestly, when you first start out, Adrenaline Boost is going to be the be your, your best bet. But I mean, later on in the tree, you're going to switch it out. But Adrenaline Boost is a really fun ability to use at the beginning of using axes. So Battle Rush is the next ability. And Battle Rush is really cool because you can either dash to an ally or an enemy. So let's start with the enemies first. If you dash to an enemy, and it's going to hit in a 5 meter radius. It's going to reduce all the healing that they receive by 20% for 4 seconds. So that's really cool to apply more pressure. On the other side of that, if you dash towards an ally, it increases the healing received by 20% for 4 seconds in that same radius for everybody. So it's a really cool way to play like defensively or offensively to push pressure or to you know back up and do a little reset. Okay, so Eternal Bleeding is your next ability. It's probably the most used ability. So what it is, is you swing your axe around you, dealing damage to all enemies around you in a 6 meter radius. And what it does is, it applies a bleed to them. Now, if the enemy is moving, the bleed lasts longer and hits harder and all that kind of stuff like that. So like, this is such a cool ability because like, when you hit a target and you're in a fight, nobody's gonna stand still. So after this eternal bleeding is applied to them, as the target's moving, it does more to them. It has a more of an effect on them. So that's a really cool ability. Raging Blades is the newest addition to axes. And this ability is really cool. So you, you pop it, it's insta-cast, and it puts these blades that spin around you. Now, it does magic damage to all enemies in a 6 meter radius around you. And also, it, for each time it hits, it increases your damage done by 4% by 3 for three seconds and this stacks up to 10 times so basically how i pair this is um if i know i'm about to use my e ability i'll make sure i use raging blades first to get my 10 stacks of extra damage and then i'll use my e um you can also use it to catch people and it's just a really cool ability because you don't really have to do anything you just you know turn it on and then you can go back to doing your normal rotation so we're going to start with all the e's for all the weapons we're going to go ahead and start with great axe first um so great axe it has an ability called whirlwind now whirlwind is so much fun to play so 
what you do is you spin and then in a five meter radius around you you do just a massive amount of damage so it's, it's like a channeled ability uh but also increases your um movement speed by 20 percent as you're spinning so basically you're just like a whirlwind of just death and destruction um it's so much fun to play and the more you level this up the stronger it gets and it's just really fun so the next weapon is halberd the uh, e ability is called tear apart now this is massive this is probably the number one uh weapon for a long time it does massive claps so basically you hit all enemies around you in a seven meter radius and then it applies a bleed to them and then also it applies a big chunk of damage but the cool thing about this is so let's say if like an enemy has two stacks on them of your q ability or whatever you're going to apply two more stacks to them so it does more bleed damage over time plus that initial big you know clap uh howard is super fun you can come out of stealth with it all right so infernal scythe is next it's one of the coolest single weapons anyway your ability is called bloody reap now what this does is okay so bloody reap has like it says it's instant cast but after you press the button there's like a little ramp up time like a little charge and then it does the damage but so what it does is it does an initial amount of damage and on that first initial hit of damage it also applies a bleed for five seconds and then also hits them again so it hits them two times for all the enemies around you so let's say it hits for 200 damage it hits that 200 damage twice plus it, it applies a bleed for five seconds um i hope that makes sense uh it's a really cool ability which don't forget that it does after you press the button has a ramp up time for just a couple seconds for, for it lets it go so next weapon is the Karen Caller. Uh, this is a really fun ability. It's called Morgana's Raven. Now what it does is it throws a raven out in front of you. And then in that line that it that it goes, uh, it deals damage to all enemies and additionally bleeds them for five seconds. So as you can tell, uh, axes are a bleed clash. You know, you want to basically kite and bleed them around. But the cool thing about this is, is for the duration of the bleed, the target's healing received is reduced by 35%. So not only do you do additional damage, a nice bleed on them for 5 seconds, but during that 5 seconds their healing is reduced. So like, by 35%, that's really strong. Um, Morgana's Dream is really, really fun. It's really fun for group play. As far as like solo play, it's a little bit more challenging. Um, it can still be done, but it's really fun for group play. Okay, Bear Paws is the next weapon, and the E ability is called Razor Cut. Bear Paws just looks so cool. What this is, ability does is you dash in front of you, swinging your two axes, and then in front of you where you swing, you do a massive amount of damage in an AoE cone in front of you. Also, it applies a bleed, a true damage bleed for six seconds, like so it bypasses armor and stuff like that. Um, the only thing with Bear Paws is you need to practice it because you can overshoot people or undershoot people. It's very skill shot. Um, but if you can get it right and be really good at Bear Paws, extremely strong. I'm not that great with them. I have like a 45% hit rate with them. I swear I do. I don't know what it is, but this is a really strong weapon. And if you can take the time to learn how to use them properly, you can really do some damage. Okay, so Battle Axe is next. Now, this is the first axe that you get when you're first leveling up axes. Um, such a strong axe, actually. I feel like it's underrated. The ability is called Vampiric Strike. Now, what it does is it deals damage to the enemy. Nice amount of chunk of damage. But here's the cool thing. So, depending on how many charges of your Q that you have stacked up, you do a life steal. So one charge, you know, you do 30%, two charges, 60%, and three charges, you do that massive amount of damage, and then you life steal for 100%. Um, this is really awesome. Really, really good way to keep yourself because it does damage to them and heals you at the same time. Um, you can take this like a mercenary jacket, and then you can use the um, Raging Blades to heal you while your mercenary jacket is available, you know, like when it's, when it's activated. And then also hit them with the... Um, with this ability the vampiric strike and just do like massive amounts of damage and healing and you're applying so much pressure to them and you're also giving them frazzled because you're applying pressure you're staying at full health while they're losing health uh basically the best way to win pvp fights is to just outthink your opponent i know that sounds you know base you know like oh okay obvious but if you can get your opponent to be more uh frazzled than you you know like like more like oh what's oh man oh you know like if you can get them to be more that way and you you control the fight so you might not have the best ability or the best setup for that fight but if you can keep them just like on their toes and like they're just like so scrap you know frazzled basically it's the best way to put it uh you'll always win fights because they're gonna be just you know you're just applying too much pressure to them and you're overwhelming them okay so we're gonna run through the um armor really fast here 
Um, I feel like a Scholar Cow is a must for all axes. You have a really big energy problem. So the Scholar Cow right here with the energy shield, um, basically whenever you pop it, it's on a 20 second cool, 27 second cooldown. Every time you take damage, you get energy back. You just can't, you know, it's perfect. Um, maybe in a ZVZ setting, you'll have like a Night Helm or like a Soldier, maybe. But um, pretty much this is the way you want to go right here, Scholar. For chest piece, I run the Helion jacket just because the uh, life seal aura is really good because it does damage and then also heals me. So it allows me to apply extra damage pressure for AOE when I'm clearing mobs and for when I'm fighting opponents have that extra damage and that little bit of healing on top of it. <clears throat> now that we're in the uh, chest here, so you can also use an assassin jacket, you know, uh, soldier armor is extremely strong because soldier armor has that ability called fury. So every time you, so when you activate fury and every time you take damage, um, it puts stacks of fury and then once you know the duration is over your damage is increased uh, It's really strong actually really really strong especially for like um, to be a bruiser like a melee bruiser for ZVZs or like any medium to small to small scale content uh, If you can't afford a uh, Helion jacket just go straight mercenary mercenary jackets amazing so this ability called bloodlust what bloodlust does is it heals you every time you do damage now um, don't ever swing this in the um, other the Helion jacket. The Helion jacket uh, does damage and heals you, but it doesn't heal you nowhere near as much as the mercenary jacket does. So mercenary jacket for pure healing is extremely powerful. Moving on to the boots section, um, I use cultist sandals because uh, I'm 400 in all cloth, so it just I get a really nice bonus for that, and they're really cheap. Uh, rotten ground is the ability. So basically, you just put this rotten ground. Um, as you're as you're running and it reduces their healing and also um, lowers the resistance so it allows me to do more damage uh, just applying more pressure and be able to do more damage hit them harder but you can do anything you want um, you can do gigantify boots you can do any boots you want uh, dodge roll with the um, you know if, I mean I would I would use a boot that has a sprint on it is what I always say because this does it, it is a sprint even though it's a 30 30 percent movement increase it's still is a sprint the only one that doesn't have a sprint right here is one of my favorite boots called stalker shoes now stalker shoes it's uh, a blink this is called raging blink now teleport you to a location and after you teleport your damage or healing power is increased by 15 percent for four seconds um and they just increase the blink range so it's a lot bigger um this is really really strong um it's really good with claymore too uh it's on it's on my claymore build uh, we'll talk about that next but um you know in the next video but basically you can blink and then dash so you know people can't run away from you uh, but Raging Blink is really strong. As far as capes go, um, I just use the Keeper Cape or the Undead Cape, but you can use any cape you want. Um, it's all preference. Alrighty guys, well that's the end of the video. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, Swords are next. Uh, sorry it took me a little long to get this video out, but there was just so many changes coming out with Albion. Like they were, they were, they were changing skills and abilities and weapons abilities and armor abilities and all kinds of things. And I just want to make sure that, uh, I was releasing a video at a time when everything was kind of nice and set, you know, because like I said, I didn't want to release a video and then, you know, something to be completely different. Uh, so that's why it took me so long. And then also I went to TwitchCon and uh, and then I also got sick before TwitchCon. <laughs> uh, but don't worry, guys, we're, we're back on track now. Uh, Swords will be next after this. Uh, comment down below if you have any other builds that you think are really cool for axes or um, any of the weapons that you want to see that we haven't done yet. Like I said, Swords are next. Uh, just thank you guys for, so much for all the love and support. Hit me up on Discord if you have any questions, comments down here, or on my Twitch, as always. I love you guys so much, boys. Peace.